It's Thursday! But more importantly, it's Chin Club! Woo! Oh. Wow! Been planning this all year. I hope year. you guys know that we wanted to launch this a very long time ago. <laughs> a very long time ago. Um, but it was originally going to be an in-person thing. But, uh, you know what? I actually think it's kind of better suited to, like, an online event. It is. Um, and I'm very excited for this week. Especially because we don't have any choice. <laughs> well, we kind of, we kind of been planning and getting ideas, but we kind of kept putting it off because we wanted to do it in, in person. It would say, so particularly, more, particularly the launch. But we got to the point where we just couldn't put it off any longer. It's driving me mental, so we just, we're doing it. We're doing it. We've done it. Ta -da. Let's go. So what are we doing tonight, boys and girls? So I want to thank everyone for coming along. I think it's a lovely idea. Indeed. I also want lots of feedback because we can make the club what people want it to be. Um, also, also I'd like to, like, before we even kick off, we've got to say a huge thank you to everyone who signed up for an ongoing subscription. Um, this means that we can actually get our gin packs to you faster. Yeah. So because it's an ongoing subscription that happens every month, we can have the tasting packs ready to go and sent to you as soon as possible. So, you know, a couple of tastings um, get delivered a bit late because we kind of put them on so quickly. But this means we can be really prepared and give you guys a little bit more. So that's also really helpful. And we can order new and exciting gins because we know we've got all you bunnies to test them on. Yay! Exactly. So. Yay! Well, we've got Ash, Luke, Love the Hair and the Shirt. We've got Karen Fitz, Jen and Liz and Ash. Beautiful. Hello, everyone. Um, and also, if you do subscribe to an ongoing gin club membership, you get it for cheap. Yeah, it is. Just save yourself some cash. Anyway, we thought we'd Hi, Josh. start at the And there'll be a discount on all the things you buy in the shop. All of the gins. All the gins. Yeah. Um, and we thought we'd do Australian natives. Hi, Alex. Hello. <laughs> Australian natives. Why? Why? I think we mean gin influenced by Australian native botanicals, aren't we? Sorry, gins that use Australian botanicals. We haven't ch 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 chopped up indigenous botanicals, not people or grass animals. Or that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so gins that use Australian native botanicals. Um, we just thought, like, in terms of, like, the biggest growing category in gin is Australian gin. And what is Australian gin? We thought we'd really, like, go to the root and talk about what makes Aussie gin really Aussie gin. So what um, does make Aussie gin really Aussie gin, Luke? Aussie stuff. Aussie, Aussie stuff. Botanicals. Ah, awesome. Anyway, so we're going to kick it off with the Seven Seasons um, Bush Apple Gin. Which is the pink one. Pink. Well, it's, yeah, it's red. Pink. Now you want to say good things about this Bush Apple Gin? Can you say? What do you want me to say good things about? Well, you can start talking. What are the good things? I'm gonna it's good made things. by, well, one of the well, inspirations is Dan, Daniel Mott. Motlock, who's a member of the Larrakia Nation and an ex AFL footballer. Oh, okay. He got together with some of his family and they decided that they're going to make gin with Australian botanicals. So they've used, they've got three or four that they make now, and they're all made serious Australian botanicals. This is about the bush apple. Yeah. There's one made with green ants. There's oh, they made the green ant one too. So what was the deal with that? Because it used to be made by somebody else. Did they just change names? Was it sold to somebody else? Or? No, well, Daniel was behind it all, but he was just getting, he had another distillery, not you know, distillery maker for it, because he didn't have the dis distillery. Oh, okay. Uh, right, so that then makes they got sense. some funding and, and some capital behind them, and they then built their own distillery. Yeah, okay, fair. Yeah. Um, the other great thing is that uh, the Seven Seasons, before it was Seven Seasons, it was started off with the Green Anching, as you know, made by Ms. Motlop and um, Adelaide Hills Distillery. Yeah. Um, the reason he's branched out to fully make his own distillery is the fact that the gins, that the, the spirits that they're making are using native Australian botanicals. They're foraged by um, indigenous Australians using traditional techniques. They look after the Australian bush where they forage it from. So it was really important that like everyone was involved in actually doing it properly. And that's fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, and good. it's been hugely successful. Indeed. Anyway, let's give it a whack. Wow. Oh, the audience, the audience is here. Uh, all right. Oh. Oh. Great, great punch of eucalyptus. Start. He's very. It's like a. It's 
like an early morning walk in the wet but it's bush. It's not that really aggressive menthol y sort of eucalypt. It's, it's almost like that strawberry gum sort of smell. Yeah, definitely strawberry gum. It's definitely got a bit of like floral. Hi, Karen. We haven't started with tonics yet. We're giving it a smell and a taste and see, see how we feel then. Yeah. We'll let you know when we do. Mm. This is really interesting on the nose. Yeah, I definitely get that strawberry gum thing happening. Mm. It's pretty what is a bush apple, by the way? The bush apples are these small sort of um, native, sort of, I don't know if they're fruits or seed pods. They're these quite gnarly looking little things. Um, they don't necessarily taste as much like apple. Um, they're more closely um, sort of related. related to or similar to things like pomegranate. Oh. So they're quite tart. Um, they're on the floral end of the fruity spectrum. Is that what gives it the colour? Um, and yeah, the fruit oh. is what gives it the colour. So they got, has it got red seeds on the inside? I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Like they're kind of like a seed pod fruit. Okay. Seed pod. Anyway, I'm going to have a little sip. Wow. Oh, gosh. Ooh. I get sort of some smokiness in there. Do you get that in it's the middle palate? It's like a woody, barky sort of. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah, smoky. This is a tricky one. I think you'll find... So I, when I first had this, one of the major promotions that they were doing was they sent it to some cocktail bars. Mm -hmm. um, this is between lockdowns, obviously. And I went up to Union Electric is where they launched the gin. Um, and they had it in a gin sour. Um, and I've got to say, with like a bit of sugar and a bit of lemon juice, all of the fruit characteristics came forward. Yeah. Um, so I think it might not necessarily, I mean, it's quite difficult to buy itself. But I'm going to add some ice to see how it feels. Mm. Oh, look, you're You're not going to add ice? No, I'm going to go with ice. Go have a look of ice, please, look. Instead, we have a very, very posh Ooh, plastic bag. It says cinnamon. Does anyone get cinnamon? I do a bit, actually. Yeah. Can I see that? Yep. I get the menthol y kind of. That comes in a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Is it cinnamon anise? There's a cinnamon myrtle. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that might pay in here. I'm actually going to go straight in with tonic. You've gone with dry. Which tonic are you going with, Luke? I'm just starting with the Cappy Dry. I just think I want to know what this tastes like. Mm, okay. Actually, yes, that's it. Cinnamon Myrtle. Yeah? Yum. That's yummy with the um, Cappy Dry. Liz, needless to say, says she's got a frozen cube of pomegranate juice floating in hers. Honestly, the woman has nothing in her fridge but garnishes. Sounds that's a lot like that's, my fridge. That's not a, that's not a criticism, <laughs> I have to say. It's imp I'm impressed. I'm going to go with the fever tree here. And what do you think of the dry, Luke? It's good with the dry. I actually think it could take a while. Yeah, well, Janice said that it's going to hurt your throat. Yeah, Now everyone got some of these, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. Now with the dry garnishes, um, they're great because sometimes we've done tastings in the past where we've like put a wedge or something in and it's been too much juice going on. But these are meant to distract too much from the gin, but they do also hydrate um, after a little while in the drink. Can I have lime and, and dry tonic? Andrew, you're lime. right. Oz and gins are the best gins. Well, Indeed. the other thing is this is... Luke and Vivian's handiwork, they were using our big spent course oven at home to dehydrate these, but we've actually now bought the dehydrator to dehydrate them like everything else on the internet. 
We ordered it. And it's coming. It arrived. Yeah, but it arrived. It arrived. It arrived after we'd after we after we'd after we'd after we'd after we'd shipped the after we had to ship. After the we sent all the gin out. So yeah. that's okay. We expected that to happen, which is why we pre-dried some. Oh, Jen right. says she's added soda and pepper and a peppermint leaf as well. Delicious. Mm. Um, I think these dry garnishes are good because they're subtle. Oh, they're so cute. Karen says it's good with fever tree and dehydrated orange. That's which, what I've got. Which fever oh, tree did you go? Oh, I think it's good. Oh, this is it. The one we sent them, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, yes. I'm really liking that. The lime's good because it kind of gives it a nice. Oh yeah, I like I like it. I've just got like got what you've got. I've got lime and lime dry. dry. Nice. Lime and dry. I've got to say, tonic does a lot mm. for this. Mm. Do you know I mean it, it sort of just brightens it up, brings out some floral notes, brings out a bit of. Now I know when we've done gin tastings recently, people have asked how much tonic to put in, and we always say just put a little bit because you can always put more, but you can't take it out. Correct. Um, and the other reason is because we're doing a tasting, we're mostly predominantly looking at the gin. We're adding the tonic as a way of opening up the gin and maybe mixing a little bit of flavour in there. But we're not we're not here to do a tonic tasting. Well, I must say, um, I think I think we, we have to try that to floor how much tonic it goes in your gin and tonic. But um, I think it's usually about three to one is the way it works out best in the end. But I generally go with fifty fifty to taste it and then add a little bit more until I get to. Yeah, it and it depends whether you're wanting a long drink or a short drink. Yes. Georgia says fever tree lemon tonic is nice with it. And Ash has said grapefruit and mint would be nice, but then it said that strong grapefruit gin. Ha 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 ha. What? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Mm. I reckon this would definitely go with the strawberry. What's great is that the longer that the dehydrated lime sits the more it sort of like starts mm. to melt in, yeah, which kind of gives it a development. But, but we've used dried garnishes before and found that that was always the case. You need to sit it, let it sit for a, a little bit for oils to get moving. But I like that. We could dehydrate some strawberries. Well, this is the thing. So Ooh. we've done citrus, but there are other things that we can do. Um, now, particularly now that we've got a professional dehydrator, we can do things like strawberries. Are you apples, implying that I'm not a professional hydrator? Excuse me. Oh, oh it's true. I, was, I wasn't being paid. Um, so, yeah. I'm a professional hydrator. <laughs> See, hydrated. What do we all think? Yeah. Thoughts? Ash was saying one of the tastings we did for Tess's birthday, a strong grapefruit gin? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. That makes more sense now. Yeah, we did the Malfi. Actually, an autumn or a spring drink rather than a summer drink. I with a bit of tonic, that's really. It really is a pink gin. Do you know that? It's that sort of like, but it's still dry and yeah. not sweet. Well, the thing is, there are pink gins that are sort of usually flavoured with raspberries and strawberries, and they're sweet pink gins, yeah. and they're fruit driven, and then there's dry pink gins which are usually maybe bitter. Whereas this is kind of yeah. a nice alternative because mm. it's dry but it's got. Interesting fruit characteristics. Oh, I think on a sunny Sunday afternoon. Hell yeah, I agree. Sunny Sunday? Don't, don't care what time it is, as long as it's sunny and I'm sitting out in the sun, I think that'd be lovely to go. 2 3 4 o'clock on a Sunday. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. shall we progress? Oh, because it says the website recommends white grapefruit and mint. Oh, I can hear that. Yeah. Dry mulberries or grapefruit gin with this one. White grapefruit and mint. Cool. Anyway. Yeah. Karen's got some good ratios. You do half and half. It's strong but simple. Nope. We agree with you, Karen. We love a half and half. Mm. Okay. Put 40 spotted. Which wins a prize for the most unusual bottle? This is a pretty, um, it's a newer release from these guys. Okay, 40 spotted, made by the Light Distillery. Yes. World famous Bill White variety. And this is just a new variation that we released recently with a new bottle, which is very funky. It's just a bottle. Oh, why don't we get one with its lid on? No, no, no. Just, <laughs> just to pull it apart. <laughs> um, yeah, it's meant to sit upside down because Tasmania is meant to be upside down. Um, 
So a bit of the joke behind it is that Tasmania sort of sits upside down on the bottom of the earth. Um, so they made an upside down bottle, and if you've seen, look in the punt, they've got a little indent in Tasmania, which is really cute. So instead of really Tassie cool. being on the bottom of the world, it's on the top of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's got a reversible label, so it works both ways. Yeah, right. I think you little bottle. Right. Um, and so this is their Tassie honey gin, mm -hmm. um, and it uses native, um, it's got a leather bark honey. Leatherwood honey. Yeah. So it's not... Necessarily oh, you can smell the leatherwood honey. It just smell. That's exactly what it smells like. Yep. Whoa. So, um, the other thing is that I, if it was any like a sweet honey gin, I wouldn't. But this is quite a, like a leathery honey, as it's called. You see. Ashley says it smells like a sharpie. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. I was like, it smells like some kind of texture. Like yeah, or like it's some got kind of polish almost. Um. Oh, so I'm just settling into that. Do you know what it reminds me of? The, um, it's almost like the same River over bison grass. Oh. Like it's got that. See, I was leading into like the tiger balm, that kind of. Mm, okay. Mentholine. I can just get leatherwood honey. <laughs> See, I, I, I get there's a grassy note to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get that bit. The other genius thing about using something like a native honey is that honey is like a good native honey should actually sort of kind of capture um, a landscape really well because yeah. obviously the honey is you know foraged by the bees from all of the plants and the grasslands around Tasmania so yeah. it actually creates a really good snapchat a snapshot, <laughs> snapchat. Of, um, of all of the different sort of plant varieties in the region. Hey, talking about snapchat, how about Facebook going down this week? I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> One yeah. of our friends said it was in payback for reminding him of all the places he'd been on holidays and couldn't go now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Liz, I see what you mean. It has got a bit of a citrus smell. Yeah, Chris said, honey, all the way. I think that, I think that, I think I'm going to be, I think I'm an orange in this one. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, I have. You're excited. What's on the palette then? Tell me. What's on my palette? Oh, what great texture. Oh, you get that leatherwood honey right on the tip of your tongue. It's I... almost got a great aniseed note. Like, oh, yeah, very aniseed. That, that plays along with that sort of barky leatherwood. Like aniseed or like fennel almost. Yeah, fennel. See, that mm. kind of plays into the grassiness that I'm getting, I think, from this one. Yeah, mm, no, indeed. Um, Alex says, butter menthols are the finish probably have honey in it. And Ashley says, says Maybe, mm. I did baked fennel during the week. It's yeah. a bit like that. Thoughts for us? I just like it. I like it too. Mm. I don't even know that. You know, you immediately think it's going to be too sweet or too something. It's, it's not. not sweet. It kind of. No. Plays leather, a, leatherwood honey's not very sweet. It plays a nice sort of balance because there's um, like, the leatherwood honey's not too sweet, but it brings up lots of flavour and character. It's the texture that I love. Mm, really good. I'm actually wondering whether I really want to mix it with anything at all. Make a bit of ice. Yeah, but I, I don't know if it's going to be a... Liz says Rubius tea. I never know how to pronounce that. What? Robus? Robus. Robus tea. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's the caffeine-free tea from South Africa. It's a, yeah, it's... I know the tea, I just never know how to pronounce it. Robus. Robus. Um... It's a, it's a, it's a, like a red, grassy tea. Mm. Yeah, Jen agrees with me. She says it's a sipping gin, not a mixing gin. Hi. Yeah. Ma'am. Um. Oh, my God. Then, Ashley said, honey suckle. Um, and carrot. Yeah, I got honey suckle as well. We've got the seven seasons, which is a 42%. This one is... Sorry, we've just got some people outside. Um, percentages. Forty. Is it a forty? Yeah. Forty spotted. <laughs> um, and then the last one is a forty-three. <laughs> um, and if anyone 
didn't know. Um, the reason it's called body squatted is forty. There are approximately forty spots on the lap, but it's why they call it forty. Oh. Because if you see the original label of the lark stuff, it had a little um, picture of a lark on it with all the little yeah, little dots. dots on it. Yeah. Oh, that makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So these used to be the old spots. Yeah, and they had. Well, even before that, there used to be the really old product had an actual little imprint of the lark on it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, and Jenna said definitely sipping gin, not mixing it. Yeah. Really good. Now what garnishes are we going to go with? Hang on. Um, I'm thinking orange. I will say, I'm pretty sure that this has a similar build, apart from the honey, as the standard 40 spotted, which works really well with honey. With orange. orange? I'm going to go orange. Thanks. I think I'm going to go orange too. And I'm going to go in with orange for a hit tonic. Karen has said Leatherwood is a health food. <laughs> Karen's really on this. Gin is a health food. <laughs> I think. What it, well, like, it almost feels like you could add a little bit, like at the end of the night. Oh, orange for you, says Liz Hayes, who is, of course, an orange person. Orange person. Am I going to go with lemon? I think that's and your decision. Really oh, wow. That orange really changes the complexity of it. Oh, I'm liking it with this orange. And I think I'm going to go with that, just a tiny dash of Indian. So just, just lightening it up a bit, not actually mixing it. Is that what you're doing? Uh, a bit of mix, but actually lemon works too. I think it just needs the acidity. Oh, oh, yummy! Okay. Do you know what actually that does? There's, what a, that? there's a very small amount of sugar in the cedar tree. With compared with the orange and the honey and the dryness of the gin, it kind of all opens up. That's oh wow! Ch that changes the smell again. Mm. I think it works well with the lemon too. Ooh, oh, good. it's just the acidity bouncing that. Now that is a hot afternoon. Oh, I actually think I could drink that when it was cold. I could drink that like when the weather was cold, not just the gin. Mm -hmm. See, I That's think, nearly a gin in front of the fire I thing think to me. I this like a Spanish style gin and tonic where you like have a big wine glass, lots of ice and lots of garnish. Oh, do you think I like it just... Uh, and not, and, but not too much. Stuff. I'm drinking it like whiskey, yeah. not like gin. Mm. The texture of that. It's is really good with tonic too. Beautiful. Delicious. How do you feel about that either? All I can taste is aniseed fennel. Orange and fennel. Mm. Really? Yeah. Oh, actually, now that you say it, it's gone from like straight aniseed. When you add the tonic, it goes more like green fennel fronds. Yeah. Which I like. It's that mm. bright and fresh. Well, orange and fennel are a great combo. That's a great salad, orange and fennel. It, it, yeah, this isn't what I was expecting. Oh, okay. Mm. I was expecting it to be super, super honey-ish. But it is quite honey. Mm. Shout out to our new lark rep who came in and gave us a sample of Thank all of these beautiful that. gins. Mm, I rocked up when they were finishing it. Yeah, Chris Carla <laughs> says you can tell they have a whiskey background lark. You can. True. Absolutely. I also like that they don't sort of shy away from that. Like, they don't deny that. They don't shy away from it. No. You know, mm. It's pretty unapologetic. Um, so you're thinking but you want to be drinking it in a big glass? Oh, it's quite aromatic. I think a big, big well, glass. Well, we, we touched on that, that whiskey background, but realistically, Bill Lark would not only, you know, went with the uh, craft whiskey thing early and everyone else has sort of followed, but he also did with the gin, because in the early days, which is a while ago now, um, the gin, the, 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 you know, the whiskey has to sit in the barrel and had something to do in between and it wasn't selling that fast so they said got a bit we're gonna get tired and bored so they started making vodka and gin and all sorts of things. So he really started not just craft whiskey but craft the gin in this country. Yeah, right. So he's definitely one of the first ever tangy gins out there. Mm -hmm. no, no, the big first. Um, and the only thing that really came before it that was really, really interesting was their it's kind of funny because before they made gin, they made a pepperberry um, vodka. Pepperberry vodka. Oh, so they did. I forgot that. Um, and I don't, I don't know if they even still make it, but I it's don't think they do. one of the best vodkas I've ever tasted. Um, and it's when you now look at Australian gin, 
pepperberry is one of the most heavily used botanicals. Shona, hi. Orange and cappy, says Shona. Hmm, okay. And yeah, I just thought that sort of progression into where we are now is really interesting. And they've done really well. They've now opened a bar. Yeah. People can go and like make their own gins and they've got a gin, funky stuff. They've recently opened a gin bar down in Tassie. Yeah. Well, let's go there. Exactly what... Well, they've certainly hung out their whiskey bar more than once, haven't they? Well, you hung... I was drinking coffee. Yeah. But they apparently opened up a gin bar in the, right in the middle of Tassie. That was the day Ross tasted 42 whiskeys in a day. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and, um, and lost all my consonants somewhere around the key. <laughs> um, Josh is saying, I can have this on a cold, windy day. Windy. With a coastal tonic, I think, beach in winter. Beach in yeah, winter. That's, all right. That's, see, that's, that's where I am. I'm with Josh. I think it's a winter gin. Beach in winter. Beach in winter is a very Tasmanian description, too. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like coastal but cold. Yeah. And Chris has said, yeah, totally different from the Indian tonic. And Alex says, also lovely 100 ml serving size, perfect for one person on a big night or two on an easy night. Good job. Good, good. I think it's Shona. It's happy. Nice. Um, well, do we have any last comments on this? I think it's I delicious. Think it's go really well with food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what would you have with food? What food are you talking um, Like, I'm thinking things like um, tuna capaccio or mm. like. You know, something meaty but not heavy. Okay. On the side with some sashimi. Like mm. a, a, a seafood kind of thing. I wouldn't go oysters, but yeah, seafood. No, but overwhelm oysters. Yeah. Overwhelm oysters. Overwhelm oysters. Might go really well with something that's prawns, though. Mm. Maybe that's just me. Anyway. I think, go, <laughs> I think it would go well with baked fennel. Baked fennel. Beautiful. Well, let's move on. chose to put it at the end um, and it's because it's quite spicy. Yeah. Um, now recently these guys have been purchased by Mighty Craft um, and the, the couple that make the gin decided to sell no. the distillery to Mighty Craft um, on the basis that they would grow the brand mm -hmm. and they would um, build a bigger distillery um, and the couple <laughs> The couple continued to, so that they could focus on the gin. So um, the, the plan is to put in a new tasting room, to put in a third still. Um, eventually the long-term plan is to put in accommodation so that they could be a tourist hub on Kangaroo Island. Um, it's the only distillery on Kangaroo Island and they're also really well known for the fact that they grow as many of their own botanicals as possible. So it's not just forage, they've gone and found the botanicals that are native to Australia grown a giant botanical garden. Well, Kangaroo Island has a huge range of um, of herbs and, and Australian botanicals that are endemic just to Kangaroo Island because they, it's so isolated. Yeah. And they also so, have the released a very small batch gin called the Koala 48, and it's entirely grown on site with 48 different botanicals. Nice. Oh no, we'll have to go to Kangaroo Island. Oh. Anyway, but I thought that was really interesting because it's one of the only distilleries that have really focused on growing all of their own. Design. Yes, Liz and Karen, you're quite right. I smell pink peppercorns too. <laughs> yeah, and I bought a bottle of this gin, and I think it's the, one of the fastest bottles of gin I've ever drunk. And that's saying something. <laughs> I've got a lot to choose from. All right, what do we have? 
are we getting? I get Seriously, peppercorns. Oh no, I drank it. I get peppercorns. I get. I still get a bit of that eucalypt in the background. In the background. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not uncommon in Australia. Isn't it? Everyone seems to use strawberry gum or lemon scented gum or lemon scented myrtle or something. It always gets a little deep hint of eucalypt in it most of them. Oh, and I get eucalypt on the front and I get the pep pink peppercorns on the back of the palette. I don't know if they use pink peppercorns. So it smells a lot like it. I'd, well, be might be might be I'd be interested to see if some of that pepperiness comes from pepperberry or even the juniper itself. But we're not saying that's, we're not saying that's what, what's in it. That's, we're just saying no, that's I'm what just, we can smell. I'm just talking about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the native juniper that they use is really, apparently, really yeah. spiky. Interesting. Nice. Oh, I like it a lot. Right, I'm going to go in for palette. Great texture right at the front, mm. really juicy, and then it hits you with that sort of tart, spicy, peppery. What is that? Mm. This said pepperberry on the palate. Pepperberry. Mm. It's like black pepper and native pepperberry, some like myrtles in there for sure. Um, that's Jen says, a bit of sulphur like ball water or gidgy tree. Spoken like a girl from outback Queensland. <laughs> oh, yes. Totally agree, Lou. Soft, then it hits you. Mm. But I think that's going to work with the... Not with the dry tonic, I think with the... I think, it, I think, it, needs the, I think it needs the Indian. I think the sugar will make a huge difference. I'm going, to try, I'm going to try it with orange, I think. I want a bit of the sweetness to go with the pepper. I'm going to do my tonic before I do my garnish. garnish. Now I'm actually... mm -hmm. Sorry, I just thought of a new question to ask about all the things we tried. Do you want wine? Oh, cool. What's that? What's the new question? The new question is, yeah. what would you change about it? Oh, this is a great gin club question because I'm mm. sure we could find gins that had a little bit more of those characteristics. Well, well, even like out of that you could be like, I like this, but it could do with like a bit of this or like. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I'm going to try it. There's like a hint of almost something rosemary about it. Rosemary? Is that kind of like the woody herbal? Oh, I like it with the. I like it with the Indian tonic. Just I had a little a dash, not 50-50 or anything, just a dash. Ooh. I don't actually want to garnish it with anything. Liz had said no mixer, fresh lime. I'm so adding a dash. Tasty. Oh yeah, I'll get the lime. The lime. Oh yeah. The lime and pepper. Oh, this, that's the tonic that I drank with when I first had it. And, oof. Now did you have it with a lot? We got, or did you try like the years ago? We've had that for a long time. It was the batch. We didn't have it in. It was the batch before this. It was oh, just, okay. just before. We, we didn't purchased. have it for about eighteen months because they changed distributors and the distributor they went to. Yeah. Nut trees. Yeah. Tricky, Bunch of nut bags. But it's now distributed by Myody Craft, who has bought the distillery. Um, and I was really glad to hear that the distillers are staying on. So they. It really, it looks like they're really dedicated to actually doing the right thing for the Lime. Thing. What do you have in mind? Mm. I love it with that tonic. Yum. That just, it makes it more juicy. Yeah, it does. I think I might go lime too, if that's the general consensus. Oh, yum. Yeah, yum. Yum. Do you know what I mean? Like this, this is like, it kind of reminds me of the things like the, Triple juniper or the really heavy juniper genes from both Never Never and Set I think it would work with the orange and the lemon as well. But the lime is really. Mm. But it holds up against tonic really well. Do you know what I mean? It stands out. Mm. Yeah, Jen said she's gone in with a bit of Indian tonic and makes the flavour fill the mouth. As you said, I added a bit of lemon rosemary thyme. It's a wild time. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, I like that. 
lime and tonic is just the best. Yeah, that's the bomb for me. I like it. I like it wow, very much. Wow, I really want to be drinking that. Anywhere no, in town. I did. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's just you only need like the little dash of tonic. Where would I be drinking that? Quick one. <laughs> yeah. Little dash of tonic, and it just goes down like water. <laughs> but it tastes better. Better, better than yeah. water. <laughs> yeah. Yum. That was delicious. I tell you what, better water tastes a lot. I wouldn't be cleaning my teeth. Oh, I would be doing. Yeah, I'd be cleaning my teeth. So, with what's it. our favourite? What does everybody like best? I don't. Hard to compare. I, I like all of those. I like all of them too, actually. I think they're all very different. This one, this one is still my favourite. Uh, but I think the Forty Spotted is really different for me. I hadn't tasted a gin that I would want to drink, sort of by a fire, yes, sipping. We did barrel aged gins, and you said exactly that. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah, the, this is I, reckon the, I reckon the bush apple. Yeah, Which I just said right. bush apple. I think the kiss is like the Kangaroo Island is my favourite. But I like all of these. Yeah. They're, you can't really compare them because they're no, not. I mean, they still have a But they're all very, nice. very much about Australian craft gin using Australian potential. Yeah, we've got very mixed opinions. Like Luke and I, the Kangaroo Island, we've got Chris, Kangaroo Island, and then we've got these with 40 Spotted. Um, and then we've got Karen and Ash with a bush apple. Very it's good. Yeah. It's good. Nice. I like it when we do a tasting and every, there's something for everybody. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because everyone has such different palettes. Well, I feel a bit bad when we sometimes do a gin tasting and everyone is unanimously agreed on one thing. So yeah. I'm like, the other ones are usually really good gins. Yeah. I'm with you, Chris. I was really surprised by the 40 spotted. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, said gins for different times. Yeah. yeah, that's what I reckon. Mm. Um, I will say the seven seasons, um, they dedicate the bush apple to when it's good for harvesting. Um, so they say that it's... Um, because they make it almost like a seasonal product. So is that an autumn gin? It's a monsoon gin, so it's January, February. Yeah, the seven season refers to the um, yeah, yeah. Um, seven indigenous seasons. Yeah. Karen Fitz says 40 spotted for me, Viv. Hi, Karen. Uh, Patrick likes the seven seasons. There you go, a bit of division over there in the Fit household. Ooh, interesting. What do you have in the last comments on these? Yeah. <laughs> Jen Donaldson says, further research is needed to decide on my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Well, i got to say, the good thing about the 100 mils is that there's at least three standard drinks in each yeah. of them. So You can try, try some more. And, and then, then really you get into it. Yeah. yeah, and then you can buy a full bottle at a 10% discount because you're a champion. Or more. Just discount. Anyway. Beautiful. Uh, well, Luke, what are we doing next week? So next week. No, hang on, we're doing next week, the next gin club. No, Wait next up. week. Hold up. First of all, First of the <coughs> next week, very excited to be doing a coffee tasting. Now, so this is our normal Thursday night. On our normal tasting. Um, Thursday night tasting, we're doing a coffee tasting. It was inspired by the release of the Tanglin um, Honeybean, honey bean, which is a coffee gin liqueur. Very exciting for those of us who like gin and now espresso martinis. Um, wow. So there's the Tanglin Honeybean, there's the um, Brindley Gold Shipwreck, which is a coffee rum, which is very, very exciting. And obviously the Mr. Black's Coffee Amaro. I'm keen to try that. Well, we try thought it. also if we're going to be tasting coffee things and we've recently done an Amaro tasting, it kind of just it went full circle. So you can get those on Drinksmiths as usual. And next month, so next oh, gin club. Next gin club on the first Thursday of the month, month which yes. won't be... We're going to be doing spicy gin, so we're going to be doing the Yoda Perf, the Four Pillars Spice Trade, and the Little Long Ginger Mead. So yeah, you won't even need to think about it if you have a subscription, because it will just arrive at your door. Indeed. Which is good, actually, because that's going to be a short week. Um, that being said, moving forward, we've had some ideas for Gin Club. Yeah. Um, as Ross says, if there's some particular gins or some ideas that you want, throw them at us. We're happy to do really experimental, weird stuff. Yeah. Um, and just remember stock is quite hard to get hold of. <laughs> that being said, me and Eva have also worked out a little secret system for one of our gin clubs. We wanted to make you guys, because we get to try all the gins for us to order and get them in store. What we wanted to do is test them on you to see if you like them, to see if you want them in store. Because we can talk for our palate, but we can't talk for yours. 
So we've got a little plan. Next time there's an opening on the gin wall and we can get a gin in, what we're going to do is we're going to send out the gin packs to everyone. And at the end of the tasting, we're all going to decide which of the three will stock. So like that. that means that we're not just stocking what we like, but we're stocking what you like. Yeah. So Beautiful. Nice. Nice. Awesome. And we thought it would be a bit of fun. Yeah, I know. So thanks, guys. Tell your friends about it. Get them to sign up. That would be cool because the more people that are in Gin Club, the more gins we can try. Indeed. Which is the whole point of the exercise. Yeah. Any last words? Drink gin. See you next week. See you next month. See you next week. Bye. See you next month. Bye, guys.